Hey everybody, this is Jeff Noble from FASDforever.com. Thanks for joining me for another Candid Convo. Uh, this week we have a Matt Sinclair. Matt Sinclair is an FASD worker and he works out of the Indian Friendship Centre in Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario, Canada. Not only is he an FASD worker, but he also lives on the spectrum of fetal alcohol as well. So I sat down and had the opportunity over Skype uh, to chat with him about his history, anywhere f uh, you know from multiple uh, foster placements to jail uh, to marriage, uh, children, and, and to where where the change actually happened and, and to where he is now, and some of the strategies he uses in his day to day life uh, so he can so he can cope the best he can. Uh, so do me a favor, sit back, enjoy the video, and uh, we'll chat soon. Thanks for joining us, Matt. No, thanks, Jeff, for having me. Well, that, that's awesome. So, let's let's we're gonna do a little bit of history. And uh, my first question is, how old were you when you received your diagnosis? I was six months old from birth. Uh, now, at first, you know, we were talking before that a along with that diagnosis, you got a lot of support, right? Yes, I had a lot of support from. Uh, speech therapist, occupational, and physiotherapist, which I still use today, mm -hmm. up to about age nine when I moved to Ontario. Then the supports disappeared. Okay, and so then, so then what happened? So you're nine years. So you moved to Ontario. You're nine years old. You're going to a new school. I'm, I'm sure school was tough. Very much so. It was uh, the years of bullying. There are some good points in it as well. Like, growing up here in Sault Ste. Marie, I was on a competitive swimming team. I did wrestling and uh, judo as well as cadets, and I excelled in that program because of the structure and routine. Okay. But in this, my school life, I was bullied because I was unique. Right. So then, obviously, uh, I, I, I like what you said in another interview is that you said, uh, hold on, i got to get my notes, is that... You know, in school, also the social stuff, you wanted to fit in so bad that you couldn't even, you didn't even really look at the social cues. What do you mean by that? I missed, it sort of misinterpreted them to where at one point it did cross some boundaries. Thankfully, nothing happened over those repercussions, but other times it did where I was involved in, I was fighting. Lot, so lots of fighting, lots of violence, right? Yeah. Okay, and so it keeps happening and then you know you almost hit puberty and it and it gets worse you know um and so more fighting but then this time i hear like you're in group homes you're not even with the same family or do you keep getting different group homes or uh yeah they should it was at different spots in that but it wasn't too bad it was sort of how do we deal with this we're at our ends with because i was running away a lot okay so why, why would you run away? I was just frustrated. Nobody seemed to understand me and the different issues I had within my family dynamic. So you're, you're, having, a, you're having a tough time at home, tough time at school, so you're frustrated, you kept running away, and then by at the age of 16, you and, a, you and some other friends were living on the street, right? Yeah, we were in Toronto. Okay. Living with four of us. So I still of you living on the street. Yep, all from Saskatchewan. But I was living in the Sioux. We started in that work because we're all from Saskatchewan. That's where my first nation is. Okay, and so then you're living on the street, and that mustn't have been very fun, or or was it, or was it? You know, nobody was telling you what to do. How, how was that experience? It was fun. <laughs> right. Oh, that's enough. okay. That, uh, you, and but, so, is that why that? it was fun? It was freedom to prove that I can do it on my own and mold something that is mine completely in a sense because a lot of people ask me, well, why did you do it? I just chose it. It was easier. Okay. And so did nobody when you were on the street say, hey, uh, uh, were you open about that you had FASD? Would you tell people? No. Right. I I hid it because I wanted to be normal. I wanted to fit in. I didn't want that label associated. Okay. And so then we're on the street, and then it's, it says by 23, now it's escalating, and you're in and out of jail, right, for assault and 
a myriad yeah. of other charges. Yeah. And so what was jail like? Jail was, I was in jail in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and it was, uh, I knew a lot of people in there. Okay. So you knew and people. That, yeah. Because I, when I was out there, I was doing some not so good things. Right. Where it made me become very violent. Okay. So from that, I sort of just went, okay, I have a choice because I, within about two months, I went from minimum security all the way up to maximum. Minimum to all the way to maximum security. Yeah. What were you thinking at this time, man? Were, were, were you, you know... Uh, I was a lot of drinking then. So you were also substances, substance abuse then too. Yeah. So, Matt, okay, so this is at 23, and how old are you now? I am 32. So you're 32 years old. What what happened? Like, look at you now, you got a tie on. I didn't even have a tie on. I should have, you know, maybe, you know, <laughs> you're, you're the one looking all classy. What what happened? What What's with the change? It started to change when I lost my grandmother uh -huh. because I got to spend some time with her before she passed away. But from there, it was just having that conversation with her that it inspired me. And she's like, you did a lot of one good things and you still continue to keep on because of my determination and my strength. Mm -hmm. So from that, I sort of met my wife a year after my grandmother passed. And from there, she sat there and she's seen a wonderful thing in me. And I already... In 2002, I had my uh, Medicineville Counseling Associates uh, training level one and two from Saskatchewan. I did pursue an education while I was in that phase. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I applied to Onika in 2009. What's, what's that? Ontario Native Education Counseling Association. Okay. And from there, the first year was rough. So I dropped out halfway, but I went back the next year and completed the three-year course. From that, I became a certified Native Counselor. That's awesome because a lot of people, I'm sure, wouldn't do that. Uh, and so you, now you're, you, you got your Native Certificate training. So you're married at this point. Is this, did your wife help you when there was times? Because here's what I want to get to. Like, uh, okay, so you still, I'm still, I'm sure you still get overwhelmed. You still could probably get ticked off. Uh, you might have some challenges understanding some things. Like uh, I know you have difficulties uh, with like uh, money and time and impulsivity, right? Those are some of the things you listed. Thanks for sharing, by the way. Who does she help? Did she keep you in check that way? Yes, she helps me very much. When you're getting mad, or you're gonna, you know, you can feel it. Like, a, what's that feel like? And B, what do you do about it? So, you know, you don't end up getting in trouble, for lack of a better term. For me, it's the irony. I play video games. I play Battlefield 4 and Call of Duty okay. when I get angry because it's a safe outlet where there's no judgment. Nobody cares what you say yeah. out of frustration because we all know how it is on online gaming. Well, you know, here's the thing. Our audience doesn't know. I, you know, I'm sure a lot of our audience doesn't know, but uh, let me paint the picture. So when you're on, uh, so your days pent up frustration, you'll go and you'll, you'll play some video games and you can express yourself that way, uh, by playing battlefield and, and, and other games, uh, where you can be aggressive, but it doesn't really have any repercussions, right? Yes. Okay, cool. So, but what about in that moment? Dude, you know, is there ever a moment like you want to snap? And again, I'm just trying to... Because I get, parents have kids like that. Very quiet. And I withdraw myself where my wife and daughter both know, okay, he's mad about something. So they they see the warning signs and they know when I'm feeling like that. Uh, and what are some of those? So you say you shut down and you withdraw. Yeah. Okay. I'm just done. It's sort of like... Okay, done, got to hit a reset, got to reevaluate. <laughs> and you find learning more about um, more about fetal alcohol helps you? Yes, it helps me in a sense of two different things. 
first of all, my job mm-hmm. as phase three worker slash counselor at the Indian Friendship Center in Sault Ste. Marie mm-hmm. at our original high school. Mm-hmm. From there, it helps me on a professional level, but it sort of makes everything come into perspective of, hey, I couldn't help it. Growing up with FASD is uh, unique. It's sort of like the best way to explain it, when you're a baby, your brain is still forming. Mm -hmm. When you're a toddler, you're a baby. When you're a child, you're a toddler. When you're a teenager, do you see the picture? Yeah, there's kind of that delay a little bit, right? So yeah. even though physically you're maturing, uh, mentally it, there's that delay. Is that is that a good way to put it? Yes. Okay. So you're often as you grow up, you're put in these situations, uh, but that your brain isn't ready for. Yes. Now let's turn this around and, and let's use some of your 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 training and, and your helping from your perspective. So I'm a caregiver. Let's just say I'm a caregiver. And because there's a lot that are going to watch this and a lot of kids are, uh, you know, some of the kids that are, you're describing what you went through, there are people in that position. What is your advice to caregivers who are having a tough time with their, with their kids? To not give up. We do, we will get it in time and we just need patience and understanding. Okay. And I, we can do amazing things with the right supports. Awesome. Now, what, what, what about a message to, to someone who's, who's living on the spectrum uh, and are watching you right now? What would you, and they're, they're, they feel hopeless. What would you tell them? We can do anything as long as we know ourselves to learn, whether that's hands-on and practical. You don't need a bad education as long as you know who you are to understand it and to have fun with it because the world won't bend for us. We will bend for it and make it our own. And that's, we'll get into that about my employment. Yeah. Okay. Let's jump right in there before we go. So right now you uh, are a counselor at the Indian Friendship Center, right? You are the FASD worker. And as it stands right now that you're not sure about contract renewal, right? That, that is correct. They are looking, my boss is looking for funding for me, which is awesome because there's a huge need for it. When I started this position a year ago, it was through, I went through two different contracts in this past year. Yeah. And it has been an amazing journey from speaking at the AG7 in Sudbury this year. So at another conference. So you've, sp- you've been speaking at conferences, right? I remember yeah. we shared the stage too in Sault Ste. Marie. I mean, you killed it there. Yeah. Okay, Matt. So let's. So you need. So they need funding for your position, right? Yes. And so if you're watching this, give Matthew some funding so he can keep his position going because he's doing great work in Northern Ontario. Uh, and, and Matt, I continue to keep going, man. This is this is awesome. Yeah. Since my position has started, I had three families that needed to get diagnosed. They were on a waiting list. From there, it was working with Sudbury for the past six months. I have gotten those three families diagnosed. That's awesome, man. And understanding them from their own perspective. How, how, How does that make you feel? It makes me feel great. Because we're finally taking Ontario between you and I, Jeff, and a couple other people that I work with up there, Sault Ste. Marie. We're taking FASD by storm. I love your enthusiasm, man. It, it's excellent. So, uh, you know, let's hope you get your position and you keep it up and keep doing the good work because there's going to be a lot of people who watch this who are either raising someone on the spectrum or who are living it with, with it themselves. Uh, who are going to look up to guys like you. And so do you mind if I uh, um, pass along your... Uh, because you have a, a Facebook group, right? Yes, I do. Northern Ontario, FASD. So Matt, uh, again, thank you so much for joining me. You are the man. You are honestly doing awesome. And I love your perspective. And keep up the good work, okay, sir? Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, 
You can subscribe to our YouTube channel by clicking the button below. Or, if you'd like some more information on fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, you can visit my website at www.fasdforever.com. Or if you'd like to join one of our online communities, you can do so by visiting my uh, Facebook fan page. So until then, thanks so much for watching, and we'll chat soon.